Hey, how's it going? Hey, everyone. So, uh, I've gotten a lot of requests after, um, well, not a lot, but a handful of requests after, uh, the last, um, video of stringing I put up. So, I figured I'd make this video. It's a, um, gonna be a tutorial slash how-to slash, um, you know, DIY type thing. Um, how to string a tennis racket. So, this is how I do it. A lot of the stuff I say is from my experience. I've been stringing since, uh, 2007 now so over 10 years I've probably strung over a few hundred rackets in that time frame so um, this is going to be on my stringing machine which is a uh, upright lockout slash crank machine um, but the old other videos I had were on a drop weight machine so a few things are going to be different I'm going to try to address each of them as the video goes on so um, let's get started so first things first uh, I would always recommend every frame or racket that you string, uh, you look up the specs online. So I always look up um, my specs from TennisWarehouse.com. I think they're the best online retailer. I also don't get paid for this. So I'm not getting paid. There's no sponsorship video. I've just been a uh, the forum member for a while, and I've been buying stuff from them for a while. It's always quality stuff and the best price and free shipping. So on $75 orders. So... Um, so I look up stuff on their site. If your racket's current or new, they'll have it on the current rackets for sale that you can look up. If it's uh, older, you can look on their uh, racket finder. If you look, scroll down on their racket section, you'll have a racket finder. You can type in specific names of the racket you have, and it'll, um, if they have it in their database, uh, it'll show up and you can look, look it up. So with every racket in their specs, at the bottom of their specs, they have a, a thing that lists the holes, or the one, the... Um, string pattern, whether it's 16 by 19, 18 by 20, um, etc. And then the grommet holes that you will skip. Uh, there will be a T or an H. T stands for throat, H stands for head. So keep that in mind. So a lot of people were asking about the Babolat Pure Arrow. Um, I no longer have that racket. I sold it. Um, it just wasn't my style, but I sold it. So that one I think is listed as seven and nine throat and seven and nine head, whereas this is a pure strike. It's the same string pattern, sixteen by nineteen, but the string uh, mains for skip holes on this was going to be eight throat and eight head. So majority of rackets, those numbers are going to be for grommet holes you skip when stringing the mains. Um, I'm not really sure if there's any rackets where you have to skip on the crosses. So mains, there's strings that go up and down like this, long ways of the racket. Your crosses are the ones that go across. Okay. Um, so I think, for the most part, that covers everything. So important things, look up the specs online, look up the, the holes to skip. And then also look at the recommended tension for that racket. Yeah, obviously, you can string whatever tension you want, but uh, the recommended range is what the company has found uh, to be the um, best recommended range. So here, this is a Battle Lab Pure Strike. Um, 16 by 19, the newest one, the Project 1.7. Um, and so uh, this is going to be a 16 by 19 string pattern, and it's going to skip 8 at the throat, 8 at the head. Like I said for the Piero, it's going to be 7 and 9 at the throat, 7 and 9 at the head. So um, I'll get to that as the mains go along. So first things first, mount the frame. A lot of people were asking about the drop weight machine that I had and um, how to mount that properly. So. Uh, that obviously is a two-point mounting system, whether this is a six-point mounting system. The two-point mounting system is a little different, but it works just fine. I, I strung on a drop weight for years um, before I got this machine. So, um, big thing for me is, first off, find the main holes, the center main holes for the throat and the head. Okay, Line those up with the, the little bar on the machine. And what I usually do is I loosen up the bottom screws so that the two posts can move. And so I will move those posts to about the size of the racket, specifically. So I'll line them up, and then what I'll do is, once it's about the right uh, distance, I'll take those two top pieces, put them on top, so make sure you have this it's centered, put those two top pieces on, and then tighten that down. And then, um, so while I tighten one, like let's say while I, while I tighten this, the head part, I will kind of pull the racket back just a little bit to make sure it sits flush with that little post. And then I'll put this piece down, tighten it down. And then when I do the throat part, I'll kind of hold the um, this base, the base part back um, so that this post sits flush with the, the throat part of the frame. 
and then I'll put that um, top piece on and screw it down. So uh, somebody else was also asking me, there's an adapter piece that kind of sits uh, along that post. I'm sorry, I, I might have misspoke here. So there's a little adapter piece that sit on the post that sit right here on the throat of the head. Um, there's a thicker one and a thinner one. I just use a thinner one. It works for a majority of the frames up there. The thicker one is for the bigger frames um, to hold it on a little better. But for the most part, that thinner piece be fine. So you put the, the thinner piece on and you want the thicker. So it's like that little adapter piece. One end is thicker. And I usually have that end sit against the frame. So have this sit against the adapter piece here. Tighten that down and do it on the side. And then after I have those tightened down, then I'll move these um, these uh, bars as far out as I can and then tighten those down. And that's how I mount that frame. Uh, sorry, I hope that's uh, clear enough and that makes sense. Um, I usually uh, look videos online and that's how I learn how to do that in the manual. That's how I learn to string myself. So get that frame mounted. This is a six point mounting frame, a six point mounting system. So I already mounted it here. Um, to explain this, basically, uh, I loosen up these bottom screws here, move these posts uh, accordingly, and then I, I found the center pieces right here. Usually on the top of every frame, there's like a dot uh, indicating the center part, or there's a little groove on the outside on the grommet to, to indicate the center part of the head. And then here, obviously, you just look for the center part, whether you have the eight grommet holes or the six grommet holes. So line those up, put those down. I tighten these, so these post back into the frame. And I just tighten uh, these four points right here to hold that in. And usually after you're done mounting the frame, you want, I usually just give the frame a little shake and make sure it doesn't move. This is just my the base of my stringer loose, so ignore that. But I usually wiggle the frame, make sure it doesn't move inside the mounting system. If it doesn't, you're good. In terms of string, um, so the string you pick, uh, do all the research on that. I can talk for string for days and then... Uh, this video would be way longer but so look for the string you want look for the recommended tension how i like to uh, measure string so if you get a uh, individual set of string it's 40 feet usually the easiest thing is um, find the midway point you know put the ends together find the middle point cut it in half that's 20 feet each that should be fine um i cut this from a reel so with string i cut from reels what i do and it's worked every time for me without any issues is i will just take the amount and so for, I know for the mains, I have 16, so I'll count 16 this way. One, two, all the way 16, and then one extra just to be safe. And then for the crosses, I do the same thing. So the crosses is gonna be 19, so I just count um, count to the string, and then I'll do one extra to be safe. And then it works every time for me. That's how I get the most out of my reel. So, um, so that's how to get the right amount of string. So, so this is uh, the lockout machine, and I have swivel clamps that are only um, one string clamp at a time. If you have a drop weight machine, a lot of those drop weight machines are just two-point mounting systems that don't have swivel clamps, and they have the floating clamps. Um, and so, um, I'll try to explain how I start strings, stringing with floating clamps. All right, guys. So here we go. Sorry, I'm recording on my GoPro, so I'm gonna try to get it as uh, close as possible here. So how I start the mains. All right. So first, put the two center mains in here. So uh, I always look at always look at the throat first. If you have eight grommet holes in the throat, you're gonna start the strings coming through the top. Or I'm sorry, through the head first to the throat. If you have six, you'll start at the throat and go up. So here I have eight grommet holes. So I started my strings down here. I came two through here, and then threaded uh, two through here. And then from there, um, so it's a little different when you have to string with. Um, the single clamps versus the flying or floating clamps that um, I did in my last video. So um, I'm going to try to explain the floating clamps method that I used to do. So the two center mains through here, and then I'm going to put the one side of the string through the, through the next grommet hole here. All right. So you have the two center mains and then this um, third string here. With a floating clamp, I'm going to clamp the these two strings, the side with that extra string. All right. And so with the drop weight, even on the old Clippermate manuals, they recommend just the easiest way is to just uh, double pull the first mains. And when you say double pull, it means that when you tension this string right here, it's going to pull tension for this main and this main. Um, 
I honestly never really noticed that big of a difference between whether you do that or whether you um, clamp uh, or tension this main and then the other main. But if you want to do that, you can look up videos on YouTube. It'll show you. But usually I would just double pull the first two mains. So one, one uh, floating clamp will clamp these two strings right here. And then you will tension this string, this, uh, this first main. So you tension this first main. And your second floating clamp, you'll come in and clamp it right about here because it's as, as close to the frame as you can get. So clamp it here. And then you're going to take that uh, string you just tensioned, put it through the next grommet hole, up uh, through the throat, through the head, tension. And so that clamp that you just used to tension or to clamp right about here, you're going to take it off and clamp those two strings up there. And then you're going to take that string again and th thread it back down through. And then take that clamp, come back down here, tension it again. So that means you will have th the first three mains on this side tension. So one, two, three, and you'll have it tensioned on this side. Um, and then you will take this string, put it through this grommet hole, pull tension, and take the flying clamp that you've been uh, having hold here, take it from here, clamp it up there, take that string, come back down here, bring that floating clamp down here, tension and then then you'll have three mains on this side and three mains on this side um everywhere i've read online they say don't tension more than three mains on the side um so a lot of people like to go one main here one main here and they'll alternate back and forth until they're done me i will go three this way and then i will go three over here and then continue doing three more this way and i'll come back and do three on this side and then finish up and then come back and finish this way i found it just helps a little bit with time so, um, but that's how you do it. So for here, I'm going to record here up close on how I start the mains with the single string clamps. So here, I don't necessarily need uh, this extra string right here um, through that grommet hole. I just need two. <clears throat> so, sorry, I would show the double clamp method, uh, the floating clamp method if I had floating clamps, but I don't have them. So sorry about that. But with these two strings, <clears throat> to start, I'm going to clamp it down here. And you always want to remember, anytime you clamp the strings, you want to get it as close to the frame as possible. So as close to the frame as possible. So I have this here holding um, this string here, and I'm going to tension this first main on this side. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to tension uh, this main string over here. Also, um, whenever you set your tension, look at your manual for that. Everything's a little different, so I'm going to leave you guys up to that. I think you guys are competent enough. So tension this main. Clamp. So I'm still going to do the same uh, three-string uh, method that I was telling you guys about. So put that string through. So here, it's a little tough to clamp because that other clamp is in the way. But like I said, just get as close as possible. So I'm going to tension the first three mains on this side. Like I said. So I have the first three mains on this side tension and none on the, the other side tension. So after I finish those first three, I'm going to go ahead and come back and start tensioning on the other side.
So like I said, there you go. I have the first three mains on this side and the first three mains on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and take the view back out so you guys can see the whole racket. That way I can spin the racket around as well. String a little bit faster. All right, so I know this is kind of hard to see the strings, but this will this this view will let me get the 360 rotation. But I will try to explain. So um, now I have three mains on both sides strung. Now, like I said, um, you can alternate. You can go one here, one here, one here, one here until you're done, or you can do what I what I've done for years and it's worked perfectly fine. Is um, you'll do three this way, right, and then three this way, and then I'll continue on one side as long as you're not more than three strings on a side. So I have three on each side and you want to pay attention um, once you get closer to the uh, the skip holes. So for this frame it's going to be eight. So I'm going to be, I'll pay attention to when I get to the eighth main on each side. So this is one, two, three. So when I get to four, five, six, seven, eight on this side, I'll need to pay attention and make sure I skip that one. Same for the other side. On the pier arrow it's going to be seven and nine. So I'll explain that when I get there as well. So Tension, release the clamp, come up, clamp as close as possible to the frame, repeat. And now what I'd like to do is I'll just leave the string tension. Um, a lot of people will remove it, but I mean if you have an um, electronic machine, you can release it. If you have a drop weight, you can release it. It's up to you. I just tend to leave it tension while I thread the next string through. Rotate, tension, release the clamp. Lock. So now this is one of those tighter spots that are a little more difficult. So now I've done three more mains on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's three on this side. So I'm gonna switch to the other side now because you don't want to go three more uh, over more than three on each side, like I've been saying. All right, so there's number six on that side. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so there's six on, so now if this was a Babolat Pier Arrow, right, this is the um, part where I have to worry about the seven and nine uh, skipping mains. So um, if I were going here for, this is main number seven, right? So this is grommet number seven. I'm going to skip that hole. So um, since it says seven on the throat and the head, I would skip number seven at the head and number seven at the throat. So instead of this grommet next, I would just go to the next grommet over and put the string through there. And same for here. Skip grommet seven at the throat and go on to the next one. So there's there's the first six mains, skip a grommet, the next one. Okay. Um, but for my for this frame specifically, I'm gonna skip grommet eight. So this is main seven, so I'm not gonna skip one. I'm gonna do seven. Main seven here, no skip holes. All right. And then now this is eight. So I've done seven mains on this side. 
Now the grommet hole number eight, I'm gonna skip that one because for this frame, I'll skip grommet eight. So it's eight at the throat, skipped it, and eight at the head, I'm gonna skip that one too. So this grommet hole here, I'm skipping. Pull it over, tension. Clamp. I'm going to head and tie that off. So um, usually the sites online will always give you a uh, recommended tie off holes. If you look at your frame, if it's been strung before, usually you can see a hole where it's already been tied off. So I'm just going to go to the next main hole, try to get that here. So this is the last main I strung. This is the main string right next to it. I'm going to go, I'm just going to thread that string through. It went in easily without any difficulty so I'm gonna go ahead and do that so tying knots there's so many knot videos online essentially it's just like tying a knot um, so it can be difficult to see so uh, I would recommend watching videos online that's how I learned it there's one channel called why you little the letter Y the letter U L I T L E so why you L I T L E um, I think he does tons of good videos it was like a bigger view so you can kind of understand knots but what I do is I just do the um, I think it's called the double hitch knot. Hitch knot. So strings up. I'm gonna go over, okay, under, and just back through the loop. I made it. Now, um, they never recommend you using your tensioner to tighten to um, tighten strings. So this is when a starting clamp actually does come in handy. So I'm just gonna clamp that in. So the good method on tightening knots back and forward and then back and forward and you want to just make it tight you want the knot to sit kind of in the grommet itself flush against the grommet you don't want the string the knot outside to touch the frame because then it could nick the string and cut it so just rock it back and forth a few times and then i'm just going to go now down uh, under and then up through the loop again and then you have two hitches so, back, forward, back, forward, just a few times, and there you go. And now repeat it on the other side. So, uh, I'll explain. So, with frames that have seven and nine, that means the seventh and ninth grommet hole, not the string. Okay, so in the back of that pier arrow, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Six mains here. You'd skip hole seven and you skip hole nine. Okay, it doesn't mean the main string. It means you skip grommet hole number seven and grommet hole number nine. So they, let's say, um, so if, for instance, if this was the Piero, I would skip seven, skip seven at the throat as well, throat and head, right? Here, here, blah, blah, tension, clamp. And then, so this is grommet hole seven, eight is where I put the string through, and then I'm gonna skip grommet hole nine. So skip grommet hole nine and put the string through again. Same thing for grommet hole nine at the head. So that's what it would look like. So I skipped seven, grommet hole seven and nine at the throat and head. Hope that's pretty um, thorough. It makes sense. So again, this is the uh, pier strike though. So the frame is going to be eight for the skipped hole. So I just strung main number seven. This is grommet hole number eight. I'm gonna skip that. And go to the next grommet hole over. Same thing for up here. For the grommet hole number eight at the uh, head. Yep. And good. Now if you, I don't know if you guys can see this very well at all. Um, I'm trying to see this here. Yeah. So when I'm tensioning this last string, this is, this is I have about I don't know, eight, nine, ten inches, maybe ten inches of leftover string for the tension head. So that's why the way I count works out well. Oh, forgot to tension it. No, forgot to clamp it. So there you go. About ten inches of string left. Clamp. So again, so this is the last main string. I'm just gonna. Go to one main string over, put that string through, 
There you go. Again, same knot. Oh, uh, under and up through that loop you made. There's one. Again, over, under, through. And done. So your mains are done. Go ahead and clip these um, as close to the knot as possible. Not always at an angle, so it kind of the string kind of rests against the friend. So same thing um, for counting the crosses. Like I said, I just counted. Uh, so the crosses have 19 crosses, so I just counted 19 of these. One, two, all the way to 19. Then one extra to be safe. Um, so there's that. So everything that I've learned online as well from the racket experts is when you're stringing across this two piece, you want to start at the top. Um, some people supposedly like it strung from the bottom up. Um, I think people like Nadal like it that way and for some reason, but he's a pro. He can feel the difference. I really can't. So crosses at the top. So the thing with the crosses here, um, there's no skip holes. So to start at the topmost at the head here, um, the first open grommet hole doesn't have a string in it. I'm going to feed that through. And now this is where a lot of practice comes in handy. One hand over top, one hand under. You're just going to weave. You're just going to, the more you do this, the easier it will become. And you'll notice with softer strings like uh, synthetic guts, it'll be much easier too. And so a good rule of thumb to always remember is if you start over, right? I started on top on this string. You start over, you should end under. You should always end the opposite. So if I started under, I'll, I should end over. So always be careful of that. So even if that happens, I usually just quickly check the string because I have, back when I first was learning how to string, I would weave and I would end opposite and I think I was fine, but I actually had somehow missed three strings for some reason. So always double check if you don't want to mess up. So thread that through. So. I usually give about, you know, maybe a foot of string, 12 inches, 10 to 12 inches of string here to tie the knot on this end. So usually I look over, um, and this grommet hole right here is flared, so obviously it was used before as a starting um, knot. So I'm going to fit that through, this grommet, this last grommet with the main string, because that's how I'm going to um, start the crosses. I'm going to put a knot through that one. So again, the same double hitch knot will work just fine. I would never do a single hitch, I always do a double. There's Parnell knots, there's tons of other knots you can learn if you're big into that stuff. I'm, I never have, I just learned the knots for string and rackets and boom. So, I did the double hitch there, okay. You could probably do less string if you want, but I just do that, it's easier to pull. And always remember, make sure it sits in the grommet itself. So, for the other stringers that have the floating clamps, what you're going to do is you're going to also um, thread this part of the string. You're going to thread it through the next grommet hole, weave it through this grommet hole, and then you're going to pull tension for the first two crosses. That's how I always did it, because you have two clamps. So, because unless you have a starting pin, that's the only way you can avoid the double pull. But I just I usually double pull the first one and it's fine. So for here, since I have single clamps, I'm going to uh, just tension this first cross. So closest to the frame as possible. Clamp, lock that down. All right? Tension head here, clamp close to the frame. So while it's clamped here, I'm going to uh, do the next string. So find the next open grommet hole. And you always want to be careful with the first few that you start because they always say, okay, if you start over, always start over. But you have to be careful with the first few because um, the string, this grommet hole may come over a different string rather than um, a different main string. So here I'm going to actually have to go uh, over first. So I started over here, so I'm going to have to do over here as well and under and just make sure that's correct. And then we'll leave it through. This is a weird position for me. And 
through the grommet hole. So start over, end it under. So whenever you're pulling cross strings here, all right. So this string you're pulling, I always with the other hand I always push the string up, okay, and then pull, push, and pull at the same time. This prevents the strings from causing too much friction and causing premature wear um, and breakage on your string. So again, pull, push up, and pull. Okay. So again, we're gonna tension this. So I do this as well with uh, with the floating clamps. Um, I always I use two clamps when I string crosses. Usually people say one, but I do two. Um, it helps for just makes it quicker. It helps it be a little safer. So I'm gonna clamp that one there, okay. and then we'll just uh, continue on. So always remember the key whenever you thread this through. So here, um, I'm gonna go here, and then I have to start over because you want to start the opposite of that string ahead of you. Uh, before it, sorry. So over here, and then just make sure they always alternate. So I started over, ended under, check I didn't miss one, and then go. So you guys probably get the gist. So again, I'm going to pull and push up so that you're not constantly pulling, you know, straight across and causing a lot of friction, which will um, cause the string to wear out easy and um, premature wear, premature breakage. You want to uh, prolong the durability of the string. And what I like to do when I tension the string here is if, if I can tension and I have the extra hand, I will usually pull the string to make it uh, straight. Personal preference, makes it look nice, nicer in the end and uh, you don't have to spend so much time afterwards making the string straight or straightening out your strings so there you go so there's the first three crosses um there's no uh shared holes there's no skips on the crosses so i'm just going to continue down for the rest of the 19 i'll speed this part up for you guys and um and then i'll bring it back when i get to the last few crosses um oh one other thing i guess we can talk about here real quick before i fast forward is shared holes so if when you look up your racket specs on tennis warehouse or wherever you may look it up but i usually go to tennis warehouse so when you look it up sometimes it will say shared holes so if you have a racket with shared holes that means let's say it says grommet hole number seven was shared that means it'll be through grommet seven you'll have a main and a cross string grow through so for instance if this said seven uh grommet seven was a shared hole that means the main would come up here, and then when I would do the crosses, I would have a cross go through grommet number seven as well. But this racket doesn't have shared holes. The pier arrow does not have shared holes either. So usually for the most part, most rackets nowadays, I don't think share holes. So it should be good. All right, cue the fast forward. Um, so as you guys can see, I'm uh, done with most of the string bed here. I'm on the last three crosses. So uh, just getting through here. I forgot to mention um, a little tip whenever you're weaving your crosses is usually kind of go weave up at an angle. And that way when you weave back, you can weave back downwards. So it's like you kind of come up and then come down. It makes it a little easier when you weave the crosses. But of course, just once the more you do, um, the easier it'll get. But here I wanted to come back and um, say some things because once you get to the last two, three, four crosses, um, it tends to get a little tough to weave because one, the, the um, spacing kind of gets really small and tight. And then two, you have less string to kind of pull through, which kind of can be a good thing, but um, it can be a little difficult. So I'm on the last three crosses here. And another thing I wanted to say too, is just like the first few crosses when you start um, you have to be careful with uh, with how you start um, the cross whether it's over or under um, I have this story back when I first started stringing back in 2007 I was trying to string on a buddy's racket um, I mean a buddy's machine he took a uh, he went and took a nap 
I didn't pay attention and I basically started um, I thought it was starting alternating but because that last the second to last string um, was different in the location I ended up stringing two strings with the same um, alternating pattern so they both went up down up down up down instead of the alternating like this cross would be up and this cross would be down so basically pay extra attention to when you start the last two or three crosses because for instance here um, I've been starting over so every time I feed the ground the string through the grommet hole I usually start over that main string but here if I started over or here um, so here I would still continue to start over so I guess uh, it's been a while since I strung this racket but here I would still start over but you want to be careful because the last one you don't want to mess up and have a weird uh, weirdly strung racket at the bottom of the last few. And usually with the when weaving since the, the space is so small on those for those last few strings, I usually weave a few and then pull the string through. So it's like I weave one, two, three, uh, pull the string through so I can get some more slack on it. Um, so over one two and just make sure you always continue the alternating pattern here Clamp. All right. So um, here we go. So here's my the last cross I'm stringing, right? This cross number 19. So feed it through the grommet hole, and usually I would start over. But if I looked at the previous cross, um, the previous cross um, was already uh, is already over, so I need to start under this time. So key point is just be careful on the last few crosses how you start, so you don't mess up. Because I've messed up um, when I first started, and I'll never forget. So, I weave one or two, pull the string through. The thing is, for me, I have um, really sweaty hands, and so it's hard to, to kind of grab the string. Um, so, here we go. Here we go. Get through the last grommet hole. Tension. So you guys can see, I have about, I don't know, 20 inches of string left over for the crosses. But, um, now obviously you don't want to cut it too close. So if you want to just be safe, do the 20 feet for the mains and 20 feet for the crosses and it'll be good. But, because if you're too short, then um, it's just a nightmare. So here, so now um, I'm gonna look here. This main, I'm gonna look. So this last cross I strung, and I'll look at an adjacent grommet hole. And now this one right next to it is flared a lot. So depending on the company uh, your racket's from, uh, some of the companies nowadays will make that uh, the grommet hole flared automatically for you. Not automatically, but flared when you buy the racket. One, it just makes it way easier to tell which. Um, uh, which grommet hole is going to be the the knot versus you know which grommet hole is uh what's it called knot so now this is actually a really tight space because of the clamp position so i remember just over down and up through the loop then take your you know you can tighten it by hand starting clamp is nice for this purpose here Repeat, it's going to go over the string, under, and back through the loop. Okay, so here's here's the loop, string comes through, there you go. There's double hitch. And the forward and backwards motion, and then there you go. I'm going to clip off. Those ends. So 
of the way. Release the clamps. There you go. So I wouldn't worry necessarily on the first time you string a frame. First time I strung a frame it took me three hours. Because it was a drop weight. I wasn't getting the drop weight right. My clamps kept falling apart. So the first time you string, I would give yourself a solid two hours at least. Um, to make sure, you know, you in case you mess up, in case you need the extra time, give yourself at least two, three hours. Well, there you go. Racket is complete. Two pieces. For those wondering uh, what type of string this is, this is Signum Pro Poly Plasma uh, 18 gauge or 17L. Um, I'm not sure. I think it's one point. It's a super old reel, but yeah. Yeah, Signum Pro Poly Plasma 1.18 millimeters. Yeah, so there's the frame completed. Sorry, I know the background kind of sucks and it's hard to see. But hopefully I was thorough in my explanation so you guys can understand. Um, and then if you have any questions, obviously uh, leave a comment below. I'll try to answer them as best as I could. But hope that helps. Thanks for watching.